Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. Uh, today we will be discussing module 9, Genome Engineered Disease Modeling, under which we will be discussing about cancer disease uh, models. Before we start our lecture, let us have a look into this uh, particular structure in a building and you can identify this is a chimney uh, which is atop a firewood place through which the smoke uh, goes out of the building. And uh, here wood and charcoal is burned to uh, produce heat and in that process it breaks down and deposits itself as a powdery dust which we call as soot, it is black in color. And this simni soot uh, basically is a fine black and sometimes dark brown powder and is a common ingredient in the making of uh, soap polis. Uh, the simnis uh, get dirty due to the deposits of this soot and they have to be cleaned from uh, time to time. And you can see here a uh, simni cleaner, uh, this uh, photograph by William Carrick and you can see uh, the darkened faces and hands and other body parts including the costume due to the simni suit which is stuck to the cleaner in the process while he was cleaning. And you can see here another uh, simni cleaner uh, sitting atop a simni and uh, uh, this picture uh, depicts a miserable person in a way. And uh, here uh, is uh, one scientific study uh, by Percival Pott uh, in 17. Uh, who, who lived from 1714 to 88 and he is considered as the founder of orthopedics. And uh, it is interesting that he observed uh, scrotal cancer to uniquely afflict the simni sweepers in England. And he found the uh, accumulation of a simni suit on the lower scrotum where the cancerous ulcers were located and concluded that a compound in the suit probably induced uh, skin uh, carcinogenesis. Uh, this is an important uh, uh, fact that we need to discuss before we go move on to discuss about cancer uh, modeling in cells and animals. Uh, this is the magnum opus by Rudolf Virchow and uh, the uh, Kranthaften uh, Gaswalse and this is the first landmark book on uh, tumors. And Virchow believed that the growth of cancer cells in body uh, fluids is due to the presence of a growth stimulating substance uh, or a chemical growth factor which exists in the fluids. So, these are some of the important concepts and factual development regarding uh, the understanding of uh, cancer. And you, uh, you can see here uh, a collection of a uh, tar cancer specimen. And, uh, uh, Vichos uh, study, uh, studies inspired uh, Ichikawa in 1915 uh, uh, who along with uh, Katsu Saburu Yamigawa uh, applied coulter repeatedly inside a rabbit's air uh, which successfully uh, resulted in cancer. And this study was one of the landmark studies which was nominated as a candidate for the Nobel Prize uh, around that time. Uh, this specimen is the world's first successful artificially produced tar cancer specimen. So, from the conceptual uh, development of the simni shoot and the disease it causes in simni cleaners to this artificially produced tar cancer specimen, we can see a common linkage that we can uh, develop the disease model uh, which occurs in, in human subjects in, in animals. So, this study as I already uh, told you uh, uh, on, on with tar inducing uh, cancer in rabbits is recognized as a major, major achievement in the history of uh, uh, cancer research. So, uh, we have spoken to you about uh, the disease modeling in the earlier lectures. Once again, uh, let us uh, understand that modeling an experimental approach uh, to investigate complex biological systems 
has significantly contributed to our understanding of cancer. Extensive cancer research has been conducted uh, utilizing animal models for elucidating a mechanisms and developing uh, therapeutics. So, when we uh, say a modeling of a disease uh, and particularly cancer modeling, uh, this is a continuous uh, cyclic uh, process. So, the first step in this entire process is identification of the question. A good model design defines the question to be answered by the model, determines the desired resolution whether the study is to be done at, done at the microscopic level or the macroscopic level. Uh, given the complexity of the biological uh, system uh, from molecular level to population level of study, we will aid in outlining the scope of the model which is the range of the question and its boundary, the field of study, which will determine the parameters of input and outputs of the model. The next step is uh, model building. Once we identify the question, we go on to build up the model. To build a model, uh, a physiologically or pathologically relevant system should be tailored to make the resolution of observation match the scope of the study. The driving factors of the system which is consistent with the parameters in the identified question should be able to be manipulated under experimentation. The system should produce a relevant and useful readout that properly addresses the endpoints of the study. And in the third step, we go for testing the model which we have built up in the second step. This testing of the model involves adjusting the parameters of the driving factors as input and generation of outputs that allows evaluation for comparison of real systems. The study design should emphasize the importance of a well defined and controlled operation and ensuring statistical power for meaningful uh, conclusions. Once the model testing is over, we go for evaluation of the outcome in the fourth step. The endpoint of the study should be compatible with that of the real system, allowing comparison between the two systems at translatable basis. The translation of modeling results to clinical outcomes depends on the resolution of the model. High resolution allows more straightforward applications of the results to clinics, while low resolution results require consideration of genetic background and scaling. So, sometimes uh, we need to improve the model. Uh, so, in the fifth step, uh, we go for model improvement. A continuous assessment should apprise the system for improvement and modifications. The endpoints should be critiqued and evaluated within the context of the real biological system. Uh, this becomes input for the next test run and uh, guide the design improvement. A well designed model can bridge the gap to translational studies and inform their design with similar feedback from clinical studies informing the next model improvement. And this can be uh, a cyclic uh, iterative uh, process until and unless we get a model which is uh, as good as the uh, physical uh, system. Uh, this uh, interplay can advance fundamental knowledge and uh, clinical uh, therapies. So, these are the main steps uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the continuous cycle of cancer modeling, identification of the question, model building, model testing, outcome evaluation and model improvement. And this is as you can see in the picture a, a cyclic uh, process which can uh, go on and on until we get realistic results uh, from the uh, model. Let us now discuss about uh, the genetics of uh, cancer what happens exactly uh, at, the, at the genetic uh, level or the, to the genetic landscape whenever a cancer occurs. And the original uh, genome in an individual uh, can get altered during its lifetime uh, with hundreds of point mutations, uh, translocations, chromosome gains and losses uh, as well as gen gene loss and uh, gain. And this gives rise to a highly complex uh, cancer genome. In order to understand the effects of these accumulated alterations, precise animal models are needed. Traditional approaches for the construction of mouse models are time consuming and laborious and we have discussed about this animal modeling 
uh, earlier uh, and requires manipulation of embryonic stem cells and involves uh, multiple steps. Development of the gene editing and genome engineering tools like JFN, Talon and CRISPR-Cas9 system uh, for efficient and precise genome engineering in cancelled mammalian cells, eggs and animals is transforming generation of mouse model and other animal models uh, for many diseases including uh, cancer. Let us uh, uh, briefly again discuss the widely used methods for generation of uh, transgenic mites uh, with respect to um, model building. So, uh, we may have uh, spontaneous mutations or we may have chemical or radiation in these uh, mutations. So, uh, in these spontaneous uh, mutations uh, uh, which occurs due to uh, natural uh, uh, mutations, uh, we may get a pathological phenotype from which we get a, a mutant uh, a colony and some of the uh, animal models which can be generated uh, or which are obtained through these are the uh, harmansky pudlak syndrome or severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID. While in the second type chemical or radiation induced mutations, we uh, provide the radiation in the chemical uh, mutations uh, artificially which induces some kind of uh, uh, genetic changes and gives rise to uh, mutant phenotypes. So, in the spontaneous mutation, mutations, uh, modifications appear spontaneously in mice colonies after successive breeding events and are usually detected when associated with a phenotypic change. The analysis of the genetic background of spontaneously mutated mice can be associated with the events encountered in human pathologies and further used as models of specific diseases. While in chemical uh, or radiation induced mutations, Genetic mutations are based on the exposure of mice to mutagens uh, that can be used for large scale programs of mutagenesis and establishment of specific genetic alteration, alteration patterns responsible for uh, human diseases. Other methods for generation of transgenic mice involves uh, retroviral uh, infection and micro injection of the uh, DNA constructs. In uh, microviral infection, uh, uh, partially controlled uh, protocols for generation of transgenic mice uh, uh, is used and this is based on the transfection of pre-implantation embryos with a retrovirus that contains the gene to be replaced or modified. The modified embryos are implanted into recipient females and analyzed for the presence or absence of the genetic modifications in concordance with the developed phenotype. While in a case of micro injection of DNA constructs, the protocol as the name suggests comprises the direct injection of DNA constructs into one cell fertilized embryos followed by transfer in recipient females and analysis of the presence or absence of the genetic modifications in concordance with the developed uh, phenotype. All these methods have certain advantages and uh, disadvantages uh, in the generation of transgenic mice. Uh, for example, uh, Spontaneous mutations has the advantage like discovery of novel mutations associated with specific traits and pathologies and there is no cost in induction of the mutations. Uh, however, uh, disadvantage is that such uh, natural mutation uh, frequencies are very low, hard to de detect if not associated with phenotypic changes. Extensive validation to confirm the unique role of the uh, mutation is uh, required. Uh, in the case of chemical or in uh, radiation induced mutations, we have high mutational rate, uh, minimal cost for induction of the mutation, but disadvantage is that we have random integrative mutations, hard to associate specific mutations with pathologies, extensive validation uh, to confirm the unique role of the mutation as in the case of spontaneous mutation. In the case of retroviral infection, uh, we have the advantage of insertion of specific genes and uh, low control events and disadvantage is the de novo DNA methylation vector capacity in carrying large genes is limited and there is random integration in the genome. Uh, while in the case of micro injection of DNA constructs, we have the advantage of direct insertion of specific genes, uh, it is medium control uh, events. 
high control event with uh, CRISPR uh, Cas9 uh, utilization. Disadvantage is the DNA silencing mechanism and the insertion of multiple copies in tandem, uh, random integration uh, in the uh, genome. These tables shows us a comparison between the loss and gain of function uh, in transgenic mice models uh, for uh, cancer research. So, we may have uh, models which may be for constitutive knockout models and then we may have uh, conditional uh, knockout models. Uh, in the case of constitutive knockout, uh, the type of gene modification involves uh, a gene activation which is encountered in every cell and is also permanent. And this is applied uh, in the case of overall changes in the phenotypical traits and identification of new genes involved in uh, cancer. And we have uh, many examples like uh, in the case of analyzed gene Drago, uh, function uh, P53 connected gene in response to DNA interference uh, drugs and the model of the study uh, P53 uh, negative by negative or P53 positive by negative mice uh, with wild type of deleted Drago in the both alleles. And the endpoint observation in this case was rapid tumor development and shorter survival in P53 minus by minus or P53 plus minus mice with Drago deletion. In the case of uh, conditional knockouts, the gene inactivation is inducible and can be time and uh, tissue specific uh, mirroring of spontaneous cancer development in a more accurate manner at specific point during the life of the organisms and also in specific cells and tissues. Here uh, the key components are bacterial Cre and yeast FLP enzymes. Their expressions can be controlled both spatially and temporally for recombination between specific 34 base pair LOXP and FRT sites that flank the gene of interest. Spatial control. Uh, the recombinase is under the control of a tissue specific promoter and in uh, temporal control tetracycline and tamoxifen inducible systems that control the activity of uh, Cre. What are the advantages of mouse model for studying cancer biology? We have discussed about uh, animal models in disease biology earlier uh, and we know that uh, in the case of mouse the short generation time of 10 weeks and average life expectancy of 2.5 years uh, in commonly used laboratory mice is one of the advantages and the possibilities of reverse genetics meaning the possibility to induce, introduce at will nearly all genetic alterations uh, we desire and the frequent occurrence of cancer even in the absence of carcinogenic agents uh, for example due to spontaneous mutations uh, with an exponential increase in all these uh, similar to those in humans are some of the additional advantages. However, uh, mouse is not an ideal animal uh, in all cases as not all questions posed by human cancer cancers can be answered uh, by a mouse models alone and uh, we may require uh, models from other animals uh, as well. Let us now discuss about uh, one specific uh, case. Uh, the Ewing sarcoma family of uh, tumors ESFT uh, which is the second most common type of primary malignant sarcoma. Uh, Ewing sarcoma family of tumors includes soft tissue Ewing sarcoma, peripheral primitive uh, neuroectodermal tumors and skin uh, tumors. Uh, Ewing sarcoma is a bone associated malignancy which arises primarily in childhood and adolescence. It is an aggressive cancer harboring a characteristic translocation uh, T11 uh, is to 22, Q24.3 is to uh, Q12.2. Uh, Over 90% uh, of Ewing sarcomas contain a uh, T11.22, Q24, Q12 translocation uh, which fuses the EWS uh, gene uh, on chromosome. Uh, 22 
with FLA1 gene on uh, chromosome 11. So this is the EWS FLA1 uh, fusion gene here as you can see here. The chromosomal translocation uh, here results in the EWS FLA fusion gene uh, as already shown to you in the figure. This EWS FLI1 is the most important fusion type in EWS ETS fusion proteins. Exons uh, involved are shown uh, and the black arrows indicate the fusion sites in this picture. So, the Ewing's sarcoma translocations involves breakpoints within the EWS R1 and FLI1 genes on chromosome 22 and 11 respectively, uh, which creates an EWS R1 and FLI1 fusion gene on their 22. The EWS R1 FLI1 fusion gene product is a chimeric transcription factor EWS FLI that initiates an oncogenic uh, transcription uh, program. So, this is the EWS uh, ETS FLI1 ERG. So, you can see impacting signaling pathways, uh, proliferation, then angiogenesis as well as uh, survival. Certain genes are upregulated as shown by the upward arrow and certain other genes are uh, downregulated as shown by the uh, downward arrow. So, the novel target genes of EWS uh, ETS fusion in Ewing sarcoma, uh, uh, you can see here uh, in this uh, uh, figure involved in proliferation, survival, angiogenesis and uh, uh, signaling pathway. So, this translocation can be uh, artificially uh, inducted uh, with the help of uh, various uh, techniques. So, here we are inducing this translocation in uh, HES MP cells with the help of uh, Jing finger uh, nucleases. So, you can see here uh, the uh, two uh, chromosomes 22 and chromosome uh, 11 and then there is the application of JDFN which uh, produces the fusion EWS R1 and FLI1 as uh, shown in this uh, original uh, schematic uh, diagram. So, to induce these uh, fusion genes, uh, the JDFNs are expressed in HES MP cells to create double strand breaks uh, in both uh, the genes as you can see here. The JDF news and JDF JDFN, new, uh, JDFN EWS and JDFN FLI cleavage sites are within the uh, EWS R1 and FLI1 introns respectively uh, relevant to the EWS R1 FLI1 translocation. Since uh, jing fingers in the JDFNs are designed to bind to the uh, shaded uh, sequence, uh, uh, the arrows are shown there, the presumed DSB sites after Focon nucleus domain cleavage. JDFN cleavage activity in uh, HAS MP cells is monitored by a T7 endonucleus assay. The reason around the JDFN site is amplified, the amplified product is then denatured, reannealed, and then subjected to T7 endonucleus cleavage. Insertions and deletions indels characteristic of imprecise DSB repair by NHEZ give rise to T7 endonuclease uh, cleavable uh, DNA. Nested PCA was used to detect derivative chromosomes the DARE 11 and DARE 22 in HES uh, MP cells. The translocation breakpoint junctions are only detected after expression of both JDFN EWS and JDFN FLI. RT PCA detection of the uh, EDS e EWS R1 and FLI1 fusion transcript can be seen in figure D uh, after the JDFN EWS and ZFN FLI expression in HES MP cells. The forward primer overlaps the exon 
a 2 by 3 junction of E W S R 1 and the reverse primary is within exon 9 of F L I 1 amplifying most of the E W S R 1 F L I 1 uh, coding uh, sequence. Apart from using ZFN to create SUS uh, disease models, TALEN has been also used successfully uh, uh, for somatic mutagenesis in creating uh, murine models of uh, cancer. In this work by uh, Zhang et al, uh, they used genome editing tool TALEN to create and analyze targeted somatic mutations in a murine models of a liver cancer. Uh, the talents were designed against beta catenin and APC uh, to commonly mutated genes in hepatocellular carcinoma or HCC to generate isogenic HCC cell lines. Both mutant cell lines exhibited evidence of W antipathway uh, dysregulation. Talents targeting beta catenin promoted endogenous HCC carrying the intended gain of function mutations. However, talents targeting APC were not as efficient in inducing in vivo homozygous loss of function mutations. They hypothesized that hepatocyte polyploidy might be protective against talent induced loss of heterozygosity and indeed APC gene editing was less efficient in tetraploid than in diploid hepatocytes. To increase efficiency, they administered adenoviral APC talents and could achieve a higher mutagenesis rate in vivo. Uh, talents were designed using the TALEN uh, uh, tail NT software. Uh, the criteria used for TALEN design are as below. TALEN binding sites uh, range from one, uh, 15 to 19 bases. The special length was 15 to 60 base pairs to fit the Goldie TALEN designs. Uh, when possible, TALEN target sequences were selected around a restriction enzyme site. To construct TALEN plasmids, intermediary arrays were produced for each talent pair that were compatible for Golden Gate cloning into PC Goldie talent. Arrays were joined in the PC Goldie talent vector as below, 150 nanogram each P first A, P first B, PLRX and 75 nanogram PC Goldie talent vector backbones were mixed in a 20 microliter digestion ligation reaction including 1 microliter T4 DNA ligase and 1 microliter ESP331. Uh, uh, the reaction was incubated in thermocycler for 10 cycles of 5 minute at 37 degree centigrade, 10 minute at 16 degree centigrade, 37 degree for 15 minute and 80 degree centigrade for 5 minute. 2 microliter of each reaction was transformed into E. coli and plated on LB ampicillin plates. Adenoviral APC talents were subcloned by cutting APC talents from PC Goldie talent construct with P1 and ECO R1 to transfer the full gene expression cassette to the adenoviral vector uh, PACCMV PLPA uh, LOX P SSP. The APC talent adenovirus was generated by the uh, molecular biology vector core uh, UTSW. Uh, this was followed by cell culture and uh, transfection and finally, uh, genograft experimentation. Uh, the new mice were injected with 1 uh, into 107 H235 parental uh, H2.35 APC++ plus plus clone or APC minus minus cells. Cells were suspended in a, ratio, in a 1 is to 1 ratio of metrizel and serum free media and 5 tumors for each cell type were inoculated. Tumor volume was calculated according to the formula length into white to uh, divided by 2. By directly delivering talents against beta catenin and APC into mice, Zhang et al successfully uh, introduced Zhang et al successfully introduced targeted mutations against these two genes and generated beta catenin introduced induced liver neoplasms. This was a remarkable achievement since talents were not yet used at the time to develop in vivo mouse tumor models. Some of the advantages of the method developed by Zhang and associates are it could save time and resources because experiments can be done in wild type mice and within one generation. Cells are mutated in a mosaic fashion which is a more physiologically relevant and models the evolutionary realities of cancer development.
it introduces a way to faithfully study genetic events in SCC uh, progression. It can also be used to test combinations of mutations that might synergize to uh, promote uh, cancer. With this, we come to the basics of uh, cancer models and the importance of cancer models and also two of the genetic engineer, uh, gene editing technologies uh, like Jadefen and Talon uh, in producing uh, cancer models uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, in cells. So, uh, thank you for your uh, patient hearing. We will be continuing this lecture in part B.